But you're not a man, son. You are not a man. You might think you are to some people, but to me, you're just a boy. Tell me why you think your parents brought you here. Because I was being disrespectful and lying and stealing, and my act wasn't right. This is the last resort. This was my last resort to get some results. It's called the Storm Program, showing teens our real mission. This is about keeping this child out of the penitentiary, and it's about helping this child be successful. No, just from psychologists. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly somebody thought this was a good idea. Um, and yet we're in 2019. The data to show that this was ineffective was published in 2002. I think it was probably well intended when they started it in New Jersey, as I understand is where it began in the 70s. Um, it looks good politically. It looks good publicly. Hey, we're doing something with these kids and young people, even young adults that are that are off track. But again, when you study the programs, they really haven't worked. But they continue to go on for one simple reason, they, they look good. You see the guy up here with his arm hanging off the top rail? Y'all remember Toby? When you come here as an inmate, I will own you. Don't think this can't happen to me. It can. This is your last chance. After that, you're going to be right back here with me. Beyond Scared Straight, all new Thursday at 10. On a &E. It appears from the evidence that we're more likely to create a criminal from that behavior than we would if we hadn't exposed them to it. Some of those children have been previously traumatized. They may grow up in drug abusing households. They may have parents that are divorced. They may have been victims of emotional or physical abuse previously. And those children are particularly vulnerable to adverse consequences from this. The evidence for that kind of program is actually that it's harmful. That in 10 or 12 randomized studies that have been done back in the 90s and 2000s, I guess 80s and 90s, looking at scared straight as effectiveness for delinquency prevention, um, the kids who were, who were randomized to get that prevention were 70% more likely to become delinquent or, uh, than the kids who didn't get that intervention. I think that anybody can really do a study and kind of turn it the way they want it to turn. Um, you really had to be involved. I mean, put it this way, I can sit back and read all the paperwork I want and, and, and get in all the stats that I want on something to form an opinion. But once you actually physically do it and, and see how it comes out, then I, I think you'll see a different result from this study. If we did some of this uh, to adults, uh, some people might call that torture and it might qualify as torture. Even if we had prisoners of war, I'm not sure that uh, there would be a consensus that this is an acceptable approach. That treatment that they were seeing um, would probably trigger a mandatory report to Child Protective Services if the parents were doing it or a caregiver were doing it. When they call it abusive, what do you say? Do you think it's abusive? No, I don't. I don't. Talk about that. I, I, I think, like I said again, the mission is to keep these kids from going to prison. And I, I think that if they want to say it's abuse, then they need to do a study on the prison system itself and, and see what inmates do to youth when they come into the prison You system. could make the argument, and I know social services agencies that would respond that that treatment is, was clearly abusive to the children. Get up! 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 Get up!
The emotional uh, yelling and intimidation of the children was the most troubling. The emotional maltreatment may in fact be permanently, permanently harmful. It would count as an adverse childhood experience on that scale that's been developed of counting things that happen to kids. We know that four or more adverse childhood experiences increase your risk as an adult of heart disease, of cancer, of suicide, depression, etc. Nothing good comes from having lots of adverse childhood experiences. It is as if this program, um, you know, uh, thinks that a child could learn to read if only by being scared and trying harder. And although that might be true for a very small proportion of children, most of the children who are not reading are not reading because they don't have the skills and they need to be taught the skills to read. I would say it's the same in the social competence world that it's not a matter of will, it's a matter of learning skills that are essential to succeeding. We have good evidence that mentorship and kind of empathy and uh, um, attention and support from a, an important adult um, in terms of in engaging them in discussions and engaging them in activities that are um, pro-social, that are the way society would like children to behave, will work. And there's an old saying, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. And it turns out that that's true in rearing children as well.